Well, I mean, energy is one of the biggest issues we have going on, and we've just completed our uh, budget season uh, here in Pennsylvania, and there was a, a quote-unquote energy deal uh, that occurred. You want to tell us a little bit about the energy legislation that passed and what we can expect to see out of that in the future? Yeah, uh, the energy deal was uh, really uh, half a loaf from our perspective. Uh, it was a half measure, the glass was half full or half <laughs> empty. Uh, and really in these times uh, when we're in the middle of a global energy crisis, uh, it's, it's not good enough to do half measures or provide half a loaf. But let's focus on what was passed and then what remains to be done. Uh, what was passed was an uh, energy fund uh, to support alternative energy projects in Pennsylvania. It's a $650 million fund. Uh, that will be ex invested over roughly two to four year period, in, 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 in at least most of it will be invested over that time period. Uh, there will be uh, close to $180 million uh, made available uh, for solar energy. Uh, I imagine the state is going to have a program like you have in New Jersey and in California and some other states where homeowners and businesses can match their own dollars with state dollars to uh, install solar equipment. And I think for the first time, thousands of Pennsylvanians are going to find solar to be a realistic option uh, for them. Uh, the, it also has uh, money made available for green buildings, uh, some wind uh, production, and some uh, a variety of other uh, energy conservation as well as alternative energy projects. Uh, we're strongly supportive of uh, the, the package. Uh, the state had really very little money to invest in these projects and uh, many other states understand that these alternative energy technologies are going to be to this century, the 21st century, sort of what oil and natural gas and coal were to the 20th century. We're, we're transitioning from fossil fuels uh, to uh, non-fossil fuels uh, ways of both powering our cars and, and our, our homes and businesses. And Pennsylvania has an opportunity now to get in on the ground floor. Uh, what was not done was really on the demand side of the, uh, particularly the electricity market. Unfortunately, the state Senate stalled critical energy conservation bill. Mm. Uh, and it's kind of remarkable to, to think about that for a moment. The only policy, in truth, that can deliver short-term uh, help to customers of any sort is energy conservation. We can argue about drilling in, uh, in the Arctic or anywhere else. We can argue about building nuclear power plants, but all of that is at least 10 years off. Well, but John, I need to stop you right there and say, sure. just because it's 10 years off doesn't mean we shouldn't be starting it. No, we, uh, 35 because that's a, you know, that argument could be used, well, I won't be done with college for four years, so right. I don't want to get started. No, and, and in fact, we should have been doing solar and alternative energy 35 years ago, and we sure. wouldn't be over a barrel of oil sure. today. So I agree with that sure. point. But if we're being honest with people about what can be done today to help them in the short run, the answer is conservation alone. It's the only thing. Uh, and actually, good conservatives actually understand that, uh, and good economists certainly understand that. Uh, and and uh, you know, it is true that we can uh, we can in, uh, in fact drill many more holes than we've already drilled. And in 2007, we had record drilling in Pennsylvania and around the country, uh, and natural gas production went up seven percent in 2007, and, and natural gas prices went up 60 percent. Uh, unfortunately, the prices for fossil fuel uh, products like gasoline and natural gas at the burner tip are now globalized. And the price in Pennsylvania has been affected by demand in places like China uh, and India. It, the days when we had a North American price for energy are gone. Uh, and uh, so we have to pay attention to the demand side of the market if we want to have a, an effective short-run response. And then we need to invest for the future, the 10-year period. Uh, and there, there are, uh, there are a number of things that could be done that will, will in fact help 10 years from now. But if we're worrying about what consumers are facing when the rate caps end in 2010, the only thing that can be done between now and then, other than praying, uh, mm -hmm. is to actually start conserving electricity and reducing demand. Uh, as we all know, price is a function of supply and demand. And if demand keeps going up, guess what? prices are going to go up. Well, so tell me something then. Why do we need to mandate that? Why do we need legislation? Well, you know, what will this legislation do for the average consumer? Sure. And, and that, that's a f fair question. You know, we could, uh, we could do what we've done with gasoline, which is let people get uh, uh, hit over the head by $4.20 per, per gallon gasoline. Mm -hmm. Or if we had 30 years ago, at the time of the first Arab oil embargo, done some sensible, uh, proactive policy, we wouldn't be 
uh, dependent on Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and that tin horn dictator in Venezuela for our oil. Uh, now, that's a choice. Now, mm -hmm. do we want to just allow that to happen with uh, uh, electricity and other f uh, fuels, or do we want to think about sensible policy, which can include a range of options? Uh, it shouldn't just be solar or wind or conservation. Uh, but just uh, allowing, quote unquote, a hands off attitude means that we are going to get clobbered. Mm -hmm. Well, so define conservation for me then. Sure. What, what are some things the viewers can do right now? Well, uh, and these programs, which uh, would in fact uh, conserve a kilowatt hour of electricity at about a, f about a price of three cents, uh, uh, would in include many of these things that I'm going to mention. Uh, efficient lighting, for example, uh, it's often called compact fluorescent lighting or LED lighting. Mm -hmm. Uh, that can, in fact, reduce uh, expenses by about 75%. Uh, installing an automatic thermostat in your home, as opposed to the old manual thermostat. Uh, I will confess that I often have gotten into my bed at about 11 p.m. and remembered that I forgot to turn the thermostat down. And the bed was nice and warm, and the, the staircase didn't look so attractive. <laughs> and I stayed there, and I didn't go down and turn the thermostat down. Now, and with an automatic thermostat, that just we happens. Right. Uh, there yeah, are I have plenty of examples. Uh, I, I, when we were in uh, England and lived there uh, not so long ago, uh, we had never encountered one of these before. It was a thermostat that you set according to the time of the day, and it would alternate mm -hmm. the, um, it would change the temperature of the mm -hmm. house based on if you were sleeping or if you were there or not. And that was seem to be terribly effective. And very, very I low cost. And oh, you have I one? I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my uh, goodness. Absolutely. Another thing is a, something called a smart meter. Now, uh -huh. economists sh love smart meters because it starts providing real-time pricing information to consumers and allowing them to see the price and then mm -hmm. adjust their consumption and make choices about when, and when they want to use electricity. Uh, th this is the kind of price responsiveness to demand that we have in, say, uh, the food sector. The reason why McDonald's can't charge $10 for a hamburger is uh, there's an immediate response in demand. Nobody goes to <laughs> McDonald's at $10. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have that kind of transparency and real-time pricing in electricity until we get the metering technology in that allows customers mm -hmm. to see that price and make cho uh, choices. So there's a range of things that can be done on the demand side that are critically important. One last point here is we build an electric system uh, so that the lights never go out, essentially. Uh, put it this way, when there is a blackout, heads roll. Uh, politicians start having hearings, and consumers get uh, very aggravated, calling politicians. I think Gray Davis showed us that. Y yeah, yeah, and you know, we're, we're, we, we have no, zero tolerance for blackouts. Uh, and so we build this huge system that most of the time uh, is, is underutilized. Mm -hmm. We're building a system big enough to, to serve a, keep the lights on during the very hottest hour of the, of the year, and then we add a, about a 15% reserve margin. One of the things that this bill does would be to attack the peak demands, to drive down the summer peaks by 4 or 5%, which would create much lower prices overall and avoid a huge amount of, of capital investment that we would otherwise have to pay for. Again, unfortunately, the Senate stalled this bill. What can you tell our viewers is going to happen in 2010? Uh, what do you think will happen? What should they prepare for? Right. Well, Penn Future strongly supports ending the rate caps. The, the electricity has been capped uh, for 14 years. The price of it has been capped for 14 years. And it's been, very frankly, a good uh, deal. And it's been part of the transition from a uh, regulated monopoly uh, business to a competitive business. Uh, but you can't keep prices capped forever and, and expect service to, to uh, be maintained. Uh, we're, we're again in the middle of a gl uh, global energy crisis and electricity prices are going to go up uh, in 2010. I would say c consumers uh, should prepare for increases in the range of 30 to uh, percent or more. Uh, the only way they can prepare between now and then for that is what? Conservation. Uh, you're not going to, uh, frankly, build a huge amount of new electric supply, and in most, for most hours of the year, we don't need it. So a stalled conservation bill is not a dead conservation bill, correct? So what do you expect to happen in the fall? Well, uh, the House passed this bill overwhelmingly, 150 to 50 on a bipartisan basis. Uh, the, the Senate has stalled it on a bipartisan basis. Uh, both the Democrats and the Republicans uh, stalled this bill in the Senate. Uh, we're going to be a loud voice for moving this because it's back to Charlie's question about what happens in 2010. Without reducing demand 
prices are going to go up even higher than they need to go up anyway. Uh, it's basic economics. If, if demand uh, does not go down uh, or continues to rise, prices are going to escalate.